talks. Let's talk more about it now with Dr. Ramon Pacheco Pardo, who's a lecturer in Korean studies at King's College London. Um, were you surprised that the talks have broken down like this? I mean, there, was a, there seemed to be a, a lot of expectation for things to shift dramatically in a very short period of time. I was surprised that there was no agreement and that the talks uh, broke down because the, the agreement was being negotiated even until this morning uh, Vietnam time. I, I didn't think that we we're going to reach all the goals that were set up over the past uh, few weeks. I think the, I thought the agreement was going to be less substantial than most people thought. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm definitely surprised that there has been no agreement and that there has been no uh, that the, the, the talks have broken down actually. It, it sounds obviously like both sides are just as entrenched as they were before with um, North Korea saying we will not give up our nuclear weapons and, and you know, it's, they're sticking to those red lines. Was there any choice other than to just walk away at that point? Uh, I think if it is true that North Korea uh, asked for the f removal of all the sanctions <laughs> as the nuclear is taking place, the U.S. is never going to do that. That's unthinkable. So that was clearly a red line for the U.S. We have to hear the North Korean side of the story, obviously. Uh, they might blame the U.S. or they might say, well, uh, talks continue. But I, I do think that we are closer to an agreement than we were, for example, when the Singapore summit took place, which was really a show. Because we have seen some diplomacy over the past few weeks and months between the U.S. and North Korea, between the two Koreas, China also being involved. Uh, so there is this hope, uh, there is there are these moves towards actually reaching an agreement through diplomacy. So what will happen next then in terms of talks continuing? I would imagine that the U.S. and North Korea will pick up the talks uh, at a lower level, at a working level. So High Representative, uh, North Korean Representative Stephen Vigun probably will be meeting his counterpart, uh, Kim Jong-un. And then we will see the South Koreans getting involved, trying to drive the process, President Moon trying to drive the process himself and his uh, diplomats, the Blue House, trying to make sure that North Korea and the U.S. sit down and talk, that there are trilateral meetings, that Chinese opinion is also taken into consideration as part of this process. Uh, Donald Trump said, I want to take away the sanctions so badly. That country has so much potential. Tell us more about the impact of sanctions on North Korea. Well, the, the elite itself is not suffering. So the elite is not going to suffer from the sanctions. There has been uh, there are ways in which they can circumnavigate the sanctions. Uh, but it is true that the people of North Korea seem to be suffering. And Kim Jong-un has stated publicly that he wants to improve the economic livelihood of North Koreans. So he needs sanctions relief if he's really going to improve the economic well-being of his own population. And in terms of um, the, the strength of North Korea's hand, what it actually has um, in terms of nuclear weapons, is it clear? We don't know how many nuclear weapons they have, but as long as they have one nuclear weapon and they have an ICBM that could potentially reach the US, they have the deterrent. And uh, from their perspective, probably this is what brings security and also what has brought the US to the negotiation table. So from North Korean perspective, they want a high price to be paid for giving up nuclear weapons if they're actually willing to give up the full uh, nuclear weapons program. Um, these are two men who superficially at least would look to have been trying to just cut through the, the diplomacy, just trying to cut a deal face to face. Uh, you said obviously that talks will continue behind the scenes. How long, once it goes back to the sort of traditional processes, would you expect it to take for there to be serious progress? Yeah, I will say months. If we look at the six-party talks, they started in 2003. The first agreement was in 2005, so we had over two years of negotiations uh, taking place. If we look at the grid framework in the 1990s, we had a year and a half or so of negotiations. And negotiations between the US and North Korea, real negotiations, really only started in November, December. Some people would then say in January in Stockholm, that's when real negotiations actually uh, began. So I think we are looking at uh, a few months before we see another Trump Kim summit, if there's going to be another Trump Kim summit. And obviously that plays well also for President Trump, because he'll be right before uh, the election, so a year or so before the elections uh, in the US. So if there is a success then, from his perspective, he can sell this to his base. Dr. Ramon Pacheco Pardo, thank you.